I know a whole heap of you guys have been really keen for me to do a video talking about me getting power installed in the greenhouse. So I thought I'd do that today. <laughs> The joys of working from home still. I can have my coffee break in the garden and I can chat to you guys. Thing is though, I'm not going to do a video about how to install power in the greenhouse because to be perfectly honest, I'm not an expert in that stuff. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about my experience because the reason it's taken me so long to get power installed, like nine years, is because it was a really quite scary. I didn't know what to expect. I'd kind of heard in the grapevine about the trauma and the mess it would make of the garden and all that kind of thing. But when I tried to find out any info, there isn't anything. Whenever I went online and looked, the only info there seemed to be was the guys in all the different forums arguing about how to do it without using an electrician and how to get away with doing things without having to follow certain regulations. And that's not what I was looking for. So today I'm going to do the video that would have helped me. What is it like to get power installed in your greenhouse? Does it mess up your garden? Does it mess up the house? Roughly, very roughly, what did it cost for what I got? And What's the impact been in the greenhouse? Now, obviously, I've only had it for, what, a month and a bit, a month and a half. Um, so we'll come back again next year once I've done a season and we can talk about it properly then. But let's go and I'll update you on it all for now. Do I finish my coffee or do I take it with me? So what that involved then was power being taken from a double socket that's in the house here and a channel being cut along the wall so that the wiring could be taken out. Hole in the wall for the wire to go through and there is a junction box here behind this big plant pot with a very sad looking elephant's ear saxifrage in it. So that junction box then let's do the first thing. What they did was they took the cable there and they ran it underneath our stairs over to that side. Nice, neat, safe, out of the way, not going to get damaged. Over here we've got two outdoor sockets with the cover over them because it's quite rainy here so it keeps them nice and clean and protected and they don't get splashed or get rain in or anything like that. The next bit we got then is the bit that had caused me the kind of worry and the stress and I suspect is what everyone worries about in doing this. How much damage is it going to cause to run power cables from the junction box there, underneath the patio, underneath the lawn, from underneath the lawn, around this corner, up the side of the greenhouse and into the greenhouse because it involved digging a big channel to put the cables in and that's the bit I think was the most stressful for me was looking out and seeing that channel getting dug. Now it was only maybe a couple of feet wide but it was very very deep it was about 700 mil deep because the cable had to be an armoured cable so it couldn't be easily damaged and it had to be buried at that depth so that if I was digging I wasn't going to hit it with a spade and it's got a big label over the top warning anyone that is digging that there's electric cables there. But you know what? I might have been a touch stressed on the day, but looking back, it actually wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I think that's possibly down to the electricians we chose to do this job. They were awesome. So we used a local electrician, um, not only local as in works in this area, but actually just lives across the way there. So it was brilliant. Um, and we said to him, we, we laid it all out and we said, look, yes, we could dig the channels to reduce the costs. But do you know what? I'm going to admit it, Kate and I are at that age where the idea of digging those channels just wasn't very appealing. We knew we would end up in agony the next day and what have you. So as part of it, he got a big burly firefighter in who dug the trenches. So yeah, we got firefighter in the garden 
bonus, but he dug all those trenches, filled them all back in for us. The whole thing was done in about eight and a half hours. So it was finished before we had our tea that night. How much damage did it do then? To be honest, not actually much at all. They were really good. They lifted the turf properly, put the turf back properly. We've got a small kind of line where you can see, but it's all grown back in and by next season, it's all going to be filled in nice. So actually it wasn't a big drama at all. Now, there is absolutely not enough space in here for me to get the camera in here to show you, but what we got was we got two double sockets at each end of this bench. So that's four sockets in here. That's probably more than I'm ever going to need. Now, here's the thing. Let me plug things back in. I'll tell you about all this in a second, but again, online, there is a bit of a thing about whether you need outdoor sockets in the greenhouse or not. I did expect to get outdoor sockets, I have to be honest, because I was thinking you would want them covered because you don't want them getting splashed, condensation, all that kind of stuff. But there seems to be a mix. Some people have covered sockets, some don't. Now there are positives and negatives. So obviously covered sockets would be brilliant because then I'm not worrying about if I'm watering, splashing things. It's not fancy, it's not expensive. We use an old takeaway carton, cut a hole in it for the cable, and that covers the sockets when they're not in use. So yeah, because the thing is, those outdoor socket cover things would be great if I was only using a normal plug, but because I've got thermostats and things in here, they wouldn't have worked anyway, they wouldn't have been able to close. So I'm quite happy with this. So what has it actually been like then, the last month or so of having the heating in the greenhouse? Now, I've already spoken about it a bit because we talked about the tomato plants here um, and I was saying how I was still trying to learn to get the temperatures right because, as you saw, heaps of plugs in that socket because what I'm doing is I'm only heating the greenhouse at night because it doesn't need it during the day um, but what I'm doing is I've got two pieces of equipment to help me with that. So the first one, I've got a thermostat that I've got the heater plugged into and I'll show you the heater in a second. The reason I've got that is the heater I'm using does have a thermostat but it's a bit hit or miss to be honest, I'm not impressed. So I've got it plugged into a digital thermostat that seems to be much more accurate. It's not perfect but it seems to be better. I've also got a Wi-Fi plug which only switches things on during certain times. It's a smart socket plug. So that means that I can make sure I'm only heating the greenhouse at night and it's not coming on during the day. So you're in awful close now, we're right down here. I've got my heater down at just kind of pot level because this is the important part for me. I want to heat at this level and the heat will obviously then rise. So there's no point in me putting the heater higher up because then all this bit won't get heated. Now I've chosen this Palma Bio Green Heater. Um, I'm not going to lie to you guys, okay, this is not cheap. I had no experience of this, so I went and asked on our forum and asked folk what kind of heaters they were using and why, and this one kept getting recommended. The reason being, it's splash proof, not waterproof obviously, you can't immerse it, but it is splash proof. It's designed for this type of environment. It's very, very low power usage, so it's much cheaper to run than a lot of the other heaters. Um, it's got a fan, so it moves the air around the greenhouse, and in summer, I can turn the heat off and use it just as a fan, which I may not need, but for some of you guys who are in much hotter climates than us, it might be really useful for you. Um, like I say, it does also come with a built-in thermostat, or you can buy the external digital thermostat. Um, depending on how you want to use things. But I have to say, so far, I am really, really pleased with it. So I'm guessing you want to know how much it's costing to get some heating running in the greenhouse then. So as always then, if you go to the description below any of the videos, there's a link to our gear page where I put details on any of the stuff I talk about. So the heater 
is linked there, so go and have a look. But as I said, it's quite expensive, okay? So it's probably not one unless you're properly, seriously wanting to heat a greenhouse, okay? Um, but it'll give you an idea of the things that are out there and you can go and have an investigation. But cost then, right. Firstly, how much did it cost to get the power installed in my greenhouse? So we got power diverted from the house, two outdoor sockets, power across the garden, about maybe 15 metres worth, um, and then two, four, sorry, four sockets in the greenhouse. Plus, we got an extra person in to actually do the physical digging work and put everything back again, which I said was actually done to a really high standard. All of that was just over £400 in total for everything. Um, it was a wee bit more than I thought it was going to be, but then when I considered the fact that we got six sockets installed in total and we got all the digging done, the manual labour done and stuff. Actually, it's pretty good. Um, the company we used is East Lothian Electrical. I 110% recommend them. Liam is the main guy that you'll speak to who runs the company. It's his business. He is so friendly, so supportive, understanding. He's such a lovely guy. He's so trustworthy and lovely and boy did he do a good job. He cleaned up after himself beautifully. He left the house in a cleaner state than it was when he arrived. I'll admit it. Um, and he kept apologising because he'd made a mess in the first place. The guy was amazing. Cannot fault him. The work he's done is fantastic. Absolutely, if you're anywhere in this region of Scotland, I recommend those guys. I will put their website down below. Go and check them out and check out their social media. I'll put all the stuff there for you to go and check out. They're fantastic. Okay, so that's how much it costs to actually get things installed so that I have electricity in the greenhouse. So we got our electricity bill in recently and Kate did all the figures and worked it out and we have worked out that that is actually costing us £20 a month. Okay, now obviously this is our costs. They'll be different for everyone because your factors will come in. You know, this greenhouse is not insulated. If I'd left the bubble wrap up, it would be much cheaper and much easier. If you've got a greenhouse that has gaps in it, there'll be more heat loss, that type of thing. And the temperature you're heating it to will affect it. But for us, that's what it is. Now, you have to ask, is it worth it? Okay, because you may think, well, you know, you're only growing a few tomato plants, pepper plants, whatever it is you're growing, it might not be worth it for you. You can grow your plants indoors. But for me, I was having a lot of problems with having the plants indoors with the lights. Um, you guys who've been with us a while know the reason I wear tinted glasses a lot is because I have serious light sensitivity issues. It's also why I struggle sometimes filming in the greenhouse. Um, so for me, I just couldn't have the, the plants indoors anymore. It was actually making me ill. So for me, it is worth it. It's short term. It's only until it heats up in a few weeks time. So it's very short term. And for me, yes. I think it is worth it and I'm glad I did it. And it was not nearly as much stress and drama as I thought it was. So there you go. So that is the story of us getting power installed in our greenhouse. Hope that was useful, guys. I will see you next week. See ya!